Felty was a very normal boy. He was a happy child. He had lots of friends. He was a great student. He was a good athlete and he loved, he loved life. Well, the first signs that we had anything that was wrong with Kelty is, is that it was the year of the millennium and we were traveling with three other families on a cruise. One day Kelty came down into the cabin and he said to his dad, he said, I want to jump off the ship. And this was an absolute shock to us, to everyone saying like, Kelty, what? What's going on? What's going on? He says, life isn't worth living anymore. I just don't want to go on. I want to jump off the ship. He wasn't the same Kelty after that. He was embarrassed because he had been, you know, the good old Kelty before and now he'd gone through this and everybody, he was afraid because everybody knew that there was something that had changed. When we came back from the trip, I would ask Kelty if he was okay. And he would say, mom, mom, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it because I'm afraid if you talk about it, those thoughts will come back. And not knowing what I know today, I didn't talk about it because I figured, well, maybe, maybe we shouldn't talk about it. Maybe it is okay. Maybe he says he's okay, so I guess he's okay. When you go through a loss like this, you never get over it. You never get through it. What you do is you integrate this loss into your life. And that is what the challenge is that you have, is how are you going to do this? And what we have chosen to do is to integrate this loss and hopefully in a way that we can help other people. Riley, his sister, suffered terribly. She not only lost her brother, but she lost her best friend. And she ended up with an eating disorder because that was the only way for her to take away her pain. Carrie and I tried to do everything for Riley because we, I was so afraid, I was so afraid that something was going to happen to Riley, like this fear was just entrenched in me. But she got through the eating disorder and then after that they said don't be, don't be surprised if uh, she, has, she goes to another addiction. And because it's all about taking the way, pain away and for Riley it was, it was alcohol. So we got her help at a, um, a place over on the island. She was still struggling, she was really struggling, but then she found yoga. She did her teacher training in Whistler, and then she wanted to go on and further her studies, so she went on to Chiang Mai in Thailand. Well, what happened, unfortunately, is, is that she, she did not tell me this, but she had re-separated her shoulder, and she went to another doctor, and a doctor gave her some medication and she died of a heart attack in her sleep in Thailand at the age of 23. And it was, um, it was absolutely devastating because I was all alone in my, in my home in Whistler. Carrie was in, in Vancouver and I had to phone him and tell him his daughter had died. So you wonder how you ever do go on after that. How do you go on? How do you go on not just losing one child, but losing two children? It was shortly after that that the Kelty Mental Health Resource Center was having an open house. sitting there in the front row and listening to the people and you know this one woman talked about how it actually had saved their child's life and Carrie and I just sat there and I had tears rolling down my face because it was kind of like I said this is you know this is so wonderful but it's so sad knowing that this place would never be there if Kelty hadn't died and even though we had just lost Riley we said we're going to go on with this foundation and we're going to continue on and we're going to focus more on families and we're going to make a difference because we have to do this we cannot let this what is happening to the children here in BC continue on with mental illness we have to do something and that's how we kind of focused our energy more and more into the foundation
what, one of the things that we're very excited about because we've been working with the BC Crisis Centre to develop a program specifically for youth and stigma that is going to be taken in the schools. Stigma around mental health and suicide is really seen in the silence around it because nobody wants to talk about it, nobody wants to deal with it, and so it exists under the surface and nobody and there's shame there's shame for those people who are struggling so in schools we are working with young people in grades 8 through 12 we provide two workshops for them one is on suicide awareness and response which increases their understanding of suicide warning signs of what to look out for um, and really provides a message of hope and and leaving them with the idea that there's something that they can be doing in their school community to reduce the stigma and get people help. So we have a website um, called youthinbc.com and that website provides a service for young people where they can go on a website and sign in and speak with a volunteer who is able to provide emotional support for them. So it's incredible to see the, what can happen by reducing stigma, by bringing the school community together, reducing the stigma, and encouraging people to reach out for help. I can honestly say in my career, and I've been working for a long time, I've never had so much hope that there is something, that this work is creating meaning in the community. Hands down, we see it every day. And I do believe that things happen for a reason. And you know, the reason why I lost my parents at an early age is maybe because it was preparing me for the loss of my two children. Maybe it's because it's going to have to make me stronger in some ways that I never knew that I had to be strong. And maybe it's going to make me realize is that I'm going to have a gift that maybe I can help other people and maybe that's the gift that I'm going to be given. But you just have to kind of continue to think on the positive side of things as opposed to the negative, because if you think positive, good things will happen. I had two beautiful children who I loved, and I couldn't have loved them more. 